Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video, we actually intend to talk about one very important topic that uh, you must know because you know CSI results are out and now it's time to understand what you need to do after the results because it's always a big question but many people don't actually know what they need to do. So as the results are out, there are two fate that you share right now. Either you qualified, you have checked your score and you are qualified. So very much congratulations to all of you who qualified CSI net exam. Although uh, the limit, uh, you know, the mark statement states that it was only 101 to qualify for JRF this year. It's an uh, enormous opportunity for a, a, anyone who scored more than 101 to qualify JRF this time. So heartiest congratulations to all. And the second thing that you did not qualify and you failed. So for all, in fact, most of the people actually failed. So what you need to do in both the situations, if you intend to know that, this video is just for you. So stay tuned and watch it through. So we are talking about the options after the CSNF results are out. You know, at the very present times, you know, people get really crazy that they have qualified or they failed to qualify. Anything, a lot of things happening right now because the exam is also near. They are declaring the results almost at the at the end point of the exam or commencement of the next time's exam. So it is not good. So keep all these things aside. I will talk about two types of people with it. First of all, I'll, I'll say what you need to do if you don't qualify net in the first place. And the second uh, thing that I will talk is what you should do once you qualify that exam. So first of all, if you fail to qualify that exam, you are not alone. Now believe me, it's over almost 80,000, 75 to 80,000 people have failed for that exam at this present times and only uh, 650 to 700 people qualified that exam as a GRF, 6 to 700 people as an LS. So you are not alone. Most of the people fail to qualify. So don't get disheartened about that fact. Because you know, you may also think that it's only 101 or only 96 per as a, as a mark for qualifying this time, but you still fail. You know, as the marks are less, that does not necessarily mean that uh, the exam was easy. The exam was difficult. That's why most of the people scored less marks. That's why the mark statement gets 101 as a highest score to qualify GRF this time. Now, what you should do at this present situation, you should do one thing. You should do start the preparation because you know at this present times the exam is only one month left, right? And this is the time to hold your thoughts together because this is the time. This is the most crucial time, and if you lost focus in this crucial time of the moment, you will fail the next exam again. So don't get disheartened. Don't get bothered about the fact you failed to qualify or things like that. What you should do is. Obviously, you don't know about what's going to happen in the exam. You never did. So what you do, you still prepared for this upcoming NET exam, which is uh, the June NET exam this time. So focus on that because you started the preparation early. So now it's time to end the preparation very well. And what you should do at the end of the preparation, you should focus on revising the topic that you've already learned. Okay. So that thing you should do and limit your uh, usage of social media because you know uh, everybody is posting their success whoever qualified for CSI in the Facebook in the in any other social media so don't do this because if it's going to put you in yourself in a bad mood don't don't look after that you just focus on your preparation that's all because you know now it's time for you to qualify in the upcoming June net exam that's another chance so don't lose it due to the result of this next exam okay that's why now the more importantly I am making this video for those who qualified. So what happens after the qualification? What you should do after the qualification? You should apply for the fellowship. Because you know, once people qualify for the net, they are really happy for a few days. But then again, it starts another round of your uh, preparation. And that is for in search of lab, in search of the hours. Because there are two types of people. Either you are an LS or a recipient of a GRF. Now, in both the case, you need to apply for for it as a like you know certificate what they provide ls certificate they provide grf certificate now for the certificate for for to get the certificate what you need to do is you need to apply to csir with the specific amount of uh, papers and documents and what are those documents first of all your date of birth proof which you actually mentioned in the net form 
and make sure it is correct there. Second thing is the 55% score in your masters. Okay, that's what they are going to check because that's the eligibility criteria in the first place. Third thing is you need to also provide the certificate of your last degree that is MSc or BTEC or MTech whatever it is the last degree certificate and fourth thing is the mark statement that CSI provided a printout copy of that these four things together with the Xerox copy of the form uh, it's not mandatory but you can also provide it with the roll number uh, added with it everything together you take it you put it inside an envelope and you supply it uh, to the CSI net uh, address now which address it's not fixed every single year they may change the addresses of the office although it's in the same place but the office addresses are varying so don't ship it uh, to any address which was mentioned two years back remember one thing they are going to provide a notification very soon telling you which address you need to send with all the documents so just look at it and send the documents to that place now there's one positive side and one negative side of that as well because you know if you qualify for GRF generally people qualified for GRF should start the search for lab as well. So you start searching for the lab, you are applying for the lab. So if you intend for a GRF, you intend to do PhD afterwards, then you should prepare writing an SOP. You should prepare writing an abstract or the research proposal at this point of the time. You should prepare that SOP or research abstract in hand because it's really handy. Uh, and it's actually prescribed uh, that if you decided that you will appear for the net and actually you qualify the net because you know you can check your score uh, with the original answer kit that CSR post uh, almost one and one and a half month later of that exam you start preparing that abstract that is advisable because you know you get two and a half three months to prepare that abstract but if you haven't then this is the time to prepare it because you're going to need this for every any part of the application that you go okay and also another thing you should know about a research like research interest what research is going on in that field you should check the last few years of the research papers on that same field to prepare that SOP now if you intend to know how to write the research proposal how to write the research abstract then I'm going to make a different video for that you can watch it and prepare it on your own but this you are going to need now along with that you should start searching for different lab now which lab you are going to search now first of all you first note down your preferences of different work and finally understand that work very very carefully and also look after all the all the lab that is in your near vicinity who is working in those topics now we'll go back and watch their website their lab pages what they are actually doing the research papers of that uh, individual who, whom you are going to meet because you know many a times uh, a research proposal needs to be discussed with the PI before it so uh, maybe he or she will ask you to come to his or her lab and to discuss about that matter so while you're going to discuss about that matter you should read a few of the research papers that that person already published it gets a better effect and impact on your selection at that primary time so this is just a tip uh, for you to prepare second thing then once you select the lab you join the lab and then the lab will help you to to apply for that uh, fellowship because two things are different in GRF one is the award the award that they provide you in terms of paper and second thing is the certificate the award means you'll be given GRF you'll, give, you'll be given a certain amount of money every single mo month for the five years the tenure of your PhD that's a separate thing which requires a proper uh, you know uh, what I can say a proper forward uh, of or referral from the institute or lab head uh, where you're going to do the PhD while on the other hand the certificate for certificate uh, it's directly your job you send all the details to CSR and they will provide you the certificate so that's regarding the JRF now people who qualified LS uh, has some sort of difficulty because you know uh, due to the lag in the service of CSR in this sector of LS or lectureship they neglect that uh, in many respects uh, because you know I've seen people who haven't even received their LS certificates one year back or one and a half years back so that is a problem that you may face but if you need LS certificate as soon as possible if you need it now for let's say a job is waiting for you and they are asking for the LS certificate you can't show them that is the situation then it is better that you should directly contact CSR you should go and visit their office swing by their office uh, in Delhi and ask for it with the proper cause 
and they will arrange it within a week. So that's what you can do if you need it as soon as possible. But you should have a valid reason for that because you know CSI need to do a lot of works. This is just one side of the CSIR, so the service is quite slow at this point of time. So that is what uh, intent. But uh, meanwhile, if you get a job which is uh, pending due to this LS uh, LS certificate, you can tell them with their mark statement and all the details. You can show them just to hold on to for a long time so that the CSR can give you uh, the fellowship certificate as soon as possible. So these are the things, you know, if you qualify LS or GRF, you should do these things as soon as possible because you don't have time, people are rushing into it and obviously as if you intend to do PhD, you need to start early because the, the earlier you start, the better chances you are to finish the PhD on time, otherwise it will be a huge problem. So. This is all regarding what you need to do after qualifying CSI net exam. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and definitely share this video as many as friends you can so that they also know what they need to do after the net exam is complete. Okay, thank you.